Oh, here, I can hear you now. I can hear Andrea singing. Can you all sing to me? Hello. <laughs> Allison Gregory. Andrea. Oh my God, it's so nice to see you. It's so good to see you. Pilates Bar and Gym is what I'm seeing. Hi, I'm Zaina. I don't know you. No, you don't. I don't know you either. I'm Teresa. Teresa, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So I thought, why don't we start? I thought there's some people that know each other, some people that don't. I thought just because it's our very first meeting here, um, we can go around and just say just a two minute who you are, where you are. I'm Dana. This is um, Synergy Plus. We're in San Rafael, California. I'm a physical therapist and Pilates instructor. Um, I have amazing staff, which are all part of this in some way, shape, or form. All of them introduce themselves. And um, we have wanted to always gather a Pilates community, and finally are doing it virtually, including some people who are far away that we don't get to see very often. So it's, it's great, um, exciting. We do a lot of Pilates rehab here um, through physical therapy and then introducing people into Pilates through that route. So we have more of that and less of power Pilates or fast moving Pilates. Um, but that's uh, that's who we are. So I'm going to pass off to my ladies that are here. Hi, I'm Annalisa. Nice to see a lot of you I know. I work here at Samuji. Um, I was a professional dancer and I still dance a little bit now in my almost um, 50 year old body in a different way. And um, just happy to be here with all of you guys to explore teaching and moving and all that good stuff. Hi, I'm Genevieve. <laughs> I also am a teacher here at Synergy, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm excited to kind of work with everybody and have this community. So, Andrea, how are you? Hi, I'm Andrea. Uh, I'm here in San Rafael, like two blocks from Synergy. Uh, I'm a dancer, ballroom dancer, and Pilates teacher. So I'm excited to be a part of a group of teachers. So I'm looking forward to it. And then Teresa. Hi, I'm Teresa. I'm in Oakland, California, Pilates Bar and Jam Center around Black, Brown, Indigenous people of color, fat bodies, queer bodies, trans bodies fat bodies, sex worker bodies, and disabled bodies are all the things that come into my studio. So we are not status quo, but everyone is welcome, but that's who I center in my space. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. Allison. Hi guys, I'm Allison. I uh, used to work at Synergy, um, and I was trained by Zaina, and I was in the same class with Andrea. Um, but we, uh, I moved to Florida about four years ago and I opened a Pilates studio in Sarasota. Um, the demographic is a little bit older here. So um, most of my clients are in the 55 plus range. So I do uh, a lot of like sort of reconditioning, rehabby kind of things, lots of knee and hip replacements here. So um, try to do a little more gentle, you know, um, Pilates than what uh, you would get at like a um, a bar studio or um, more of like uh, uh, like power Pilates um, and I'm so thrilled to be here and to meet all you guys. Great, thank you. And Frida? Hi everybody, I'm Frida. I'm a physical therapist and on my way to being a Pilates instructor, I work at Synergy um, as well as other places. Happy to meet you. Thank you. Laura? Hi, I'm Laura. I'm a physical therapist at Synergy 2 and just finished my um, Pilates instructor course as well. So I use that with my patients predominantly, but happy to see everybody. And Heidi? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, I've had the great uh, honor and pleasure of working in Synergy as well in the past. I'm a colleague of Andrea's. I'm a Pilates teacher, a yoga instructor, and um, I also dance as well, but I'm kind of with Anna in that navigating how our bodies want to dance with time. So I think as well, I'm kind of in that category of rehabilitative Pilates as well. I, th I like to think I'm in the middle of the road. I like good physical push, but I want it to be safe. So 
um, that's me, and I'm very happy to be here with all of you guys. Thank you for the invitation, Zaina. Uh, Kim. Hi, I'm Kim. I work at Synergy. Um, I work for Zaina. I trained with Zaina in 2016 with Genevieve, and um, I'm there a lot normally. Uh, do PT <laughs> pretty much most days. Um, PT assist. I work with Zaina on PT assist teach uh, group classes and have a fair number of privates. Um, I tend to uh, like to work with the 50 and up population because I'm closer to that myself, but um, I also just love how, how genuine and how hard they want to work and, and how, how grateful they are. Um, so yeah, so that's and I'm happy to be here too. So thank you, Zaina. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. So happy to see everybody today. Um, so happy that we're doing this. I uh, used to teach um, yoga uh, many moons ago and injured myself from yoga because I have a hyper flexible body. I felt very free with that because I'm like, I can do all these poses, but then I paid for it later because I got injured. I still have an injury that I just feel every day in different degrees and Pilates when I don't do Pilates I'm really aware of it and when I do do Pilates I you know I'm more aware that you know I'm just it's it doesn't bother me as much um I took Zaina's teaching program teaching at Synergy since um September yeah I just I love uh just working with you know rehab clients just to really dial in the uh the movements that I think in you know maybe different classes or different styles they just don't really get into so much like the coccyx curl and just those really basic foundational movements just to help people get stronger and um and i've been taking zaina's rehab uh, once a week program for that and um yeah just looking uh forward to when we can all meet again after this uh covid thing so and then we have my name is cheryl thank you for the invitation um I came to Pilates uh, from an injury, had uh, disc degeneration and some other injuries, and Pilates is what got me through it. And now I have a studio in Mill Valley. My biggest demographic is actually active aging. My oldest client is 91, and clearly I'm not seeing him right now, but every time I do, it's just so inspiring and motivating. I love helping people. Um, and, you know, then, you know, balance out with workouts also but my active aging tends to be the the big thing and i'm really excited to be here and learn from all you guys because this is the best <laughs> and then jen hi um i'm jen i um teach and i know most of you but i feel like uh currently i'm really excited to be here to hear the pilates language again and to just be around body work i think since january i've been dealing with COVID or COVID related problems, which is a total drag. <laughs> so thank you for including me. Thank you for helping me bring me back to myself. And I think this time off has uh, made me remember and humbled me to uh, how hard it is to um, be mindful and take care of ourselves when things aren't exactly perfect or the routine isn't just easy. So um, that's where I am, so thank you. Great, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for taking that time. We won't have to do that every time unless you have something to share. We can leave a little sharing window. But I thought, um, just to kick us off, I was gonna pick one of the hot topics, which I think is a hot topic. Some of you have heard me lament about this before, but I am really into getting people out of their hip flexors. I feel like hip flexors do a lot of overwork. Um, I feel like that they are often in the way. It's one of the muscles that I love to call the big dummies of the body. Um, that, that along with rectus abdominis and upper trapezius, I think those are dummies. So uh, we need to retrain those dummy muscles to do the right thing and not the wrong thing, not take over. So um, I was going to take off on my pet peeve of that, take you through some movements that will hopefully help open the hip flexors but still get you into the right muscle groups and just share kind of take you through a little bit of a flow that um, can hopefully leave you with a little bit more open 
please, you know, I, I love seeing you guys. If you want to keep your guys on the screen, don't feel like you have to hide yourself if you need to modify something. I'm quite happy for you to modify it. What doesn't feel good for you in the vision site. So um, I don't take offense to changes that you might make. Um, and I'm going to just take you through a little, a little flow here. So hopefully I'll give you something to take away that is helpful for you um, after today. So I'm actually going to start us on the mat, which is one of my favorite places. If you like to have, I like to have a ball of support usually. Um, if you have a ball, pillow, whatever you've got prop wise with you, um, that is usually helpful. Uh, maybe grabbing a roller as well for you. And then I'll try and call out different levels and modifications so that you can, you know, think if you can use that with yourself in one way, but then know what you might do for somebody else uh, in another way. So I like to go with the ball between just because I feel like a uh, ball between gives me that inner thigh activation. So I'm not death gripping that ball, I'm just holding it in place. And I use my hands on my own body enough, if I'm, especially a lot, especially when I'm about hip flexors. And one of my um, favorite places to hook my hands is using the pinky side of my hand right into the crease of my hip flexor. So sometimes that helps me get settled and get into that neutral spine. So we're going to start here in neutral spine. I'm going to give a little pressure to my hips so that my pelvis hits neutral. So pelvis neutral, for me, that means my lower spine has a bit of space back there. Shoulders, head and neck are shoulders across and head and neck are long at the back here. And I'm going to just take a breath in and exhale, warming up uh, with those breaths. So big breath in. Exhaling, belly's dropping down, and just allowing myself to feel my abdominal muscles kick in, and then another breath in, and exhale, All right. All right. and a breath in, and then exhale, All right. keeping it there. I'm going to go ahead and keep that uh, connection to the ball, again, without death gripping. I'm going to exhale, rolling into that coccyx curl while I push the hips away. So taking a breath in, I exhale, my belly's going to drop. I'm going to keep pressure at the top of my hips as I roll into that coccyx curl. And I really like to drive the coccyx curl with my abs first, then through the back body, right? And then I'd like to imagine a long string or straps at the top of my pelvis pulling that into length. So I'm really trying to stretch that coccyx that way and create more space and length. I can also take the back of the neck and put that on the stretch a little bit more. I like to use my hips again to lengthen that back of the neck there. And then I'm going to unroll that coccyx go back down to its neutral. So I'll repeat that a few times, taking a breath in, exhaling belly first, inner thigh, pelvic floor kicks in a bit, and then I'm just pressing the hips away a bit into that coccyx curl. So this is, I wouldn't do this with everybody, this is if I'm trying to get somebody who tends to be hip flexory out of hip flexors. Because even here, someone who's really locked in there is going to be a bit grippy. Yeah, so here, if I get the hands there, push away, I can find and help them find some length. Belly down, tail curling, inner thighs, squeezing enough to keep my knees stable and to get me a little bit out of the hip flexors and then unrolling back down. And one more time, just that coccyx curl, lengthening, pressing away. Squeezing, lengthening that tail. Knees go long, back of the neck is long. And then I'm going to unroll my way back down. Yeah. So taking to that next level here, I'm going to go ahead and take a breath in. Exhale, same coccyx curl is happening, rolling my way up. And I'm going to keep lengthening that tail up. Right? And then I'm going to hold this. So I was actually talking to Anna about this earlier. I would like to create heat in the body before I get very far in my workout. So gently creating heat in the body. Holding here, I'm keeping scooping my belly. I'm going to keep stretching my tail, curling my tail under. And I'm going to find my heels and just pull with those heels a little bit, just activating that posterior structure of the body. So while I'm sitting here, and while you're all sitting here, I'm going to just pop your ears off if I like to do that. I'm gonna I'm thinking about wrapping my glutes in and opening my hips with my glutes, right? So I'm trying to create as much space across the top of my body, the front side of my body, 
as I can without coming up on my chest here, right? So I want to stay, we call this the thoracic shelf across the chest. I'm trying to stay on my thoracic shelf across my chest and shoulder blades, but at the same time, I'm using those glutes to wrap underneath me and press the hip flexors open. Right? There is some work happening in my back body now, so a little bit of work along the paraspinals here, but that's okay. And I not all in them and I'm not pushing up, right? So you can totally see that difference, right? So I'm gonna drop onto that thoracic shelf, but curl up, let's go ahead and reverse that motion down. So keep that pull going. So my rib cage comes down first, and then I'm really rolling down through, lengthening, and then relaxing back down. So I'll do that again, taking a breath in, exhaling, belly, low belly, tail curls, press away through those thighs, staying on my thoracic shelf here, and reaching long, so I'm gonna dig in and fold it. Then I just can hang out and keep that wrap going upward. Right? So really trying to find that length through those hips as I wrap my tail underneath me, shoulder blades relaxed, arms relaxed, neck is long behind me. And then roll my way back down. Nice and controlled. Let's do two more like that. Taking the breath in, exhaling to go. Belly's dropping, tail's long, pelvis long, heels pulling. Upper body relaxed, neck is long and rolling back down. One more time, exhaling, belly drops, tail curls, coming up, reaching, squeezing out the top, opening those hips before I start my way back down. Rib cage down and unroll back down. Good. So here I'm going to actually remove that ball. If you know, the tendency here is just uh, for me, anyways, to want to go into the ab work to get the abs on. I find if I keep people in the hip flexor, even the hook line or into tabletop, which is really natural progression wise, um, that the hip flexors can turn right on. So instead, what I'm doing is having people pick either diamond with the legs so that the legs are down and diamond shaped open, or straight out, um, or a combination of both. So let's have you start diamond and you can try that out. So I'm going to, again, pelvis neutral. So see if you can help get yourself into pelvis neutral, apex, pubic bone, all aligned. And then I'm going to move into upper abs. So I'm going to take my hands, and I also am pretty particular about what I have people do with their hands. I have them take their pinkies at the opposite foot and push long through the back of the neck, interlacing the fingers and running the fingers down to the neck. So then I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to exhale, pull long through my neck, Bring my ribs down, and my rib cage coming down is what brings my chest up. So here, I, I really don't want to curl in my pelvis, but I want to keep that down. And so I really get that isolation of the rib cage, and then I can reverse that motion, keep lengthening my neck, working my way back down. So exhaling, stretching long, trying to relax those legs and pelvis. Right, the work is all rib cage, right, trunk. Trunk lift, back of the neck long, shoulders wrapped under, and reversing back down. Let's do two more there. Exhale, reaching long. Rib cage comes up. My head comes along for the ride, right? It's part of the spine. It just follows. It doesn't come up on its own. It comes with my rib cage and slowly back down. And then exhale, reaching rib cage down to bring that chest upward. And then slowly back down. So sliding those feet out straight now. Um, I like to use a little bit of turnout when my legs are straight. The, the danger of someone who's really hip flexor quad is that they're going to pop their quads up. So you don't want to have that much tension. You want to keep that pelvis neutral and the quads relaxed. So only the inner thigh maybe connection is what I would think about when you're trying to keep those hips open. Um, and then we can go from here, taking a breath in, exhaling, lengthening the neck, rib cage. Extend and then reversing back down. And exhaling long through the neck, rib cage kicks in. And inhaling back down. Keeping that pelvis neutral, right? So the tail is going to stay on the ground. It's not going to lift up. I'm going to keep that relaxed leg feeling. And back down. And exhaling, coming up. You could hold there if you wanted to make it a little more challenging. Keep those legs relaxed, and little pulses up. 
She's a good kid. She's relaxing through the tops of those thighs. Five, six, seven, and eight. And then reversing your way back down. Great. So all, already I'm going to move out of this position right over to my belly. So I'm going to take a float all the way over. We're going to come back to that, but I find that if you sometimes go to the belly first, you get more length out of people, um, out of their pelvis and out of the hip flexors. And then you can go back and do other things that would then activate the abs more. So here, I'm going to um, keep my upper body relaxed. I tend to, when I'm teaching them, I tend to lift my head just so I can see what everybody else is doing. But you can go uh, forehead straight down. I'm not trying to cre create any tension in my upper body. Right, so I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to exhale, stretch my leg super long. So I'm going to imagine that someone's got a hold of my right ankle, my left ankle is pulling it super long. And then from there, floating it upward. And then back down. So I'm going to switch sides, that right leg reaching long, and then floating up. So a couple things to be aware of here would be where is my tail again. So here I'm going to really cue that tail to be long. So the lowest part of my spine long as I go. I'm going to keep alternating sides. I'm thinking about the tail long and then the leg reaching long and floating up as well. So we're keeping the length on each side. And then if I can keep that length in my trunk and then go for the lifting of the leg, I'm really working so my hamstring, my butt are what's taking that leg up. And then switching sides, pulling long, floating up, and then back down. And pulling long, floating up, and then back down. Switching sides again, pulling long, floating up, and then back down. Then I can incorporate the arms if I want to create more length. So here we are definitely going to use some back extensors. I'm going to have my hand out in front. And then I'm going to take a breath in, and I'm going to shrug the shoulder blades down in the tropic, oh, let the chest open up a little bit. I'm leaving the ribs, the lowest ribs, on the mat, so I'm not picking up those ribs. I'm going to reach back down. So I'm going to exhale, shoulder blades in the socket, coming upward, shoulder blades down, and then reverse that motion back. And exhaling. So my goal here is opening the entire front line of the body. Right? If I can get that front line of the body stretched open, I mean, it's going to help me, I feel like, get the rest of the hip flexors and all of that open as well. And then back down. So going back now to the leg, I'm going to take my um, left hand. I hope my left and right. So my left is going to come into the floor, my arm, my and I'm going to lift my opposite arm and my opposite leg. So it'll be my left leg up, my right arm up, and then back down. So I'm going to slide that right arm in and float up on the opposite side. One arm right, right arm, left leg. I mean, right leg, left arm. <laughs> Sorry. And then we're going to switch left arm, float in, left leg lift, and come back down. And then switching sides again. And back down and switch and down. Good. One more time. Really reaching long. If, as you reach the leg long, what I find is if I think about that, then my knee stays straight and doesn't bend so much. Right when I'm doing that. All right. And then coming in from here, I'm going to take both legs up. Now, here, I've been lately cueing this by having people put their hands underneath their belly, right at their ASIS. The head can be forehead flat or just floating over the mat, whichever is better for them. But this way, I can push my hands into my belly and remind myself to keep it lifting up as I stretch both legs out and float upward with both legs. They don't have to go very high and then back down. So I'm just putting pressure with my hands on my lowest belly to remind me to pick it up as my legs go out. Uh, as my legs raise up. So reaching long to those legs, coming up, which will keep the knees really straight for me. Back the neck long and back down. And then coming up, holding there, and I can do my little flutter kick. So keep the belly lifting up so that I keep this part of my spine long. The hands can stay underneath you, or you can move them if you don't feel like they're helping you there. And then back down. And then you can turn the feet out. If your heels can touch, that's great. If they don't touch, being wide is fine. 
and I'm going to same thing, pick up the belly, stretch those legs, and do little heel flips here, holding. So belly up, tail long, spine long, back of the neck long, and the same heel. So try and keep the length through those heels will help you keep those knees straight. And then back down. And then here, I'm going to bring my um, heels together at bent knees. So here, if somebody feels quite tight in the front of their body, you may not be successful with this one just yet. So you might want to introduce just a quad stretch here before you go anywhere. And if you hold this quad stretch and really pull that heel in towards the bottom, you can work to press your pelvis, your ASIS, into the mat here. And that will help really open up the whole front line of the body here. So um, it's a great place to stop and do a quick stretch. And then we'll switch like creating the other one as well. So again, really trying to keep length in the front body while I do this, not let my butt pop up. And if you can't pull as far, that's fine too. I'd rather have the pelvis down than pull the leg too far. And then back down. Great, so then we can do um, single leg stretch, double leg stretch, single leg stretch, coming up onto forearms. I'm going to pick up my belly button. Um, you can go twisted hand or open hand, whichever feels better. Make sure those shoulder blades are coming down your back and your neck is really long. And I'm going to start with my right leg, going point, flex, and reach it back. Point, flex, reach back. Point, flex, and reach. Point, flex, and reach. Point, flex and reach. Point, flex and reach. And if you want to add a more advanced version, you could lift the leg as you place it back. We're trying not to shake up the pelvis too much while you do that. Point, flex, lift it down. Point, flex and lift. Point, flex and lift. Point, flex and lift. Nice. And then relax your way down. Double leg stretch is a, a whole step up. If that's you know too much for somebody, you can stay with single. But double leg stretch really incorporates that whole lengthening of the front body, which I like. So I would go cheek to one side, both feet reaching long, tail is long, so really using that tail length, belly lift, point, flex, press the feet into the mat, coming up with the hands behind, turn to the other side, point, flex, and down. Coming up, turning to the other side. And point, flex to the floor, press down to come up and turn. And point, flex to the floor, coming up and down. Point, flex to the floor, coming up and down. And point, flex to the floor, coming up and down. Nice. Great. And then if you wanted to add more swanning, this is a great time to do that, or you can come back to that. I'm going to take us over um, to the side. So going to the side, um, there's so many things we could focus on. I'm going to try and keep myself talking about this lower and the hip flexor part rather than getting distracted by the whole upper. So I'm going to try and talk mostly about that. So here, just getting yourself into a good place where you feel supported on your underside, right? And making sure that you're not sinking and sloppy in the upper part. This, this leg, so I set up with my bottom leg turned into the mat. I try and set, it's a little tiny bit in front of my body line, but not too far. And then all my side leg work, I try and do with an open hip flexor. So this is one of my pet peeves. A lot of you have heard this from me before. I don't like it if the footwork is here in front because here in front, I'm actually in my hip flexor a little bit. We want to work glutes and hip rotators, usually in sideline. So that means to activate that, it should, in my opinion, go at least in line with your body, maybe even a little bit behind your body if somebody's particularly tight. So I would connect my whole body. I would take this leg from my right in line with me, back just a tiny bit, and from here, I'm gonna do my work. So going up, flex, down, up point down up flex down up point down up flex and then i love to cue the length of the leg so really finding that feeling of pulling oh my goodness one of my themes right length i like to always cue finding more length in the body and more length in that leg and then we can turn the foot up to the sky with up point 
down up flex up point up flex up point up flex up point up flex up point up flex my speaker's not working and can you guys not hear me wait if you can hear me okay so maybe that's resolved okay all right, thanks guys, sorry. Okay, so um, this one here, there's a sidekick, which is very classic. So if, if you want to go to sidekick, the front kick is hip flexor, right? And the tighter my hamstring is, the more I'm going to be in that hip flexor. So it's up to you. If you're really trying to get somebody out of their hip flexors, I don't even do the front part of the sidekick. I actually just steal the back part of the sidekick or bottom. So I take the legs out, reach it long, and I just practice back to neutral and back again. And so I won't even go to that front side because I don't want to deal with what the hip flexor might do. So kicking back and back, back and back, back and back. And then I do do a little bit of a clamp, but I try and keep, rather than bringing it up here to clamp, I'll keep it back here. Keeping the heels together, and then I'm going to rotate open here and back down. Opening here. I just did a whole class on outer thighs. This is not feeling so good for me right now. <laughs> so you're going to go out and back down and out. So if it's somebody super sensitive and super hip flexoring, maybe you won't even do this one. Yeah. Then out and down and out and down. And then we can roll all the way to the other side. So here I'm again locking down with my leg, locking down this like turning it out down into the floor, getting myself situated, reaching this leg long in front, uh, on top, reaching long away, connecting this upper part, right? And here I go going up flex parallel now and down up point, up flex, up point. Up flex, up point, up flex, up point, up flex, up point. And then we turn out and we're going up flex, up point, up flex, up point, up flex, up point, up flex, up point, down. Right. And then for the side kick part, we're going to go just the back part of that side kick, going back, keeping this all strong and long. Back and back, kicking back and back, back and back, finding length and back, back and back. Great. And then bring your feet stuck. We'll come into that plan if you feel it's appropriate, right? Squeezing, if you feel just a tiny little knee bend, not a big knee bend here. So take your leg so that your heels are still underneath your tail. And your knees are not 90, right? they're just a little bit of a bend. And then rotating open. And rotating. That's it. So keeping everything else contained, controlled, but just trying to isolate my very tired hip rotators. And good. And then relax. All right, so then going back to our backs. Then this one. <laughs> so here, if I wanted to progress somebody here and I want to teach them how to not use their reflexes so much, where I go is to find the deep abdominals more. So um, there's a lot of ways to do that. I find if I want to bring them to tabletop, I'm going to go with the support behind the hand, uh, behind the thighs. So if, if they can do this and not grab, this is a great place to work. So I'm going to hold on to the back of the thighs. Take a breath in, I'm going to exhale, and I'm going to just drop the belly. I'm going to encourage that drop by pushing the legs away. And the reason that I think that works is because I, by pushing away, I'm activating the hamstrings and the glutes again. Right? I'm not activating the tops of my thighs, I'm actually encouraging activation of the back side. And so as I press, I can focus on my little belly, and typically the hip flexors really can't engage if the back opposing muscles are engaging instead, right? So that's why I think this works. So you could take this as far as you want, right? It could stay here for somebody who's 80. It could, for, it could work for a gymnast 
and we progress it. So if I want to progress, my first progression would be same press to lengthen the legs up to the sky and then back in. And you can choose, I tend towards turn out because I feel like that connects the inner thighs, which also turns off other things. Right, so I can progress here, pressing away and bending in and pressing out. So as I'm pressing, I'm using my tummy drop to stretch out the backs of my legs and extend and bend in. So the focus is drop the belly to straighten the leg. And once they catch on to that or you catch on to that, I feel like then you don't need the hands. You still can create, I can still create that pressure at the back of my leg without my hands in, right? So if you can create that and not get all grippy, then that's great. So are the flexors working here? Yes, they are. But our goal is to train them to work properly or let the abs kick in first and then connect. So then to progress this along, you're going to take it all back to tabletop. I'm going to actually do that same start, belly drops, press, and find my way all the way up, upper ab curl, right? And then release down. And exhale, press. And back down. And exhale, press. Really sinking, right? That's the first thing, and then everything comes along. And then one more time. And then to progress that, we move into the straight leg version, right? Still pressing away, dropping that belly is the key, and coming back in. And exhaling. So you can also use the ball as a prop between, if that helps you. Make sure you wrap the shoulders at the neck to bring it involved there. And coming back in. So sink the belly. Imagine it's going right through your body and helping you straighten out. And then if they feel like if that's working for us, then again, you could do that without the hands. Wait. And then back down. But you just have to gauge it on the progression where your student or where yourself, where you are. Right? And then this can keep going, right? We can go all the way to teaser here, right? So pressing, finding teaser, tabletop teaser, and then relaxing back down, belly pulling in, finding that resistance to come back down. And again, exhaling all the way to teaser, using those hands and the pressure of my leg to get me there without the hip flexor so much. Belly is dropping in. And then we could progress that to full teaser, right? So coming up or hand hand teaser or full teaser from the start, right? And coming back down. So keeping that leg work, keeping the belly dropping, and then coming up with your hands or without your hands, just coming into your full teaser there, right? And the work is really stretching the back of the leg again, and then working your way back down. And so that would be quite a way down the road for somebody in six foot three to get all the way to that full teaser there. But that's kind of the stepwise progression you might use there. So then the other thing, um, I'm going to show you one other extra, and then we'll talk about a few stretches. But I'm going to come um, onto all fours. So I think I'm really fond of the all four position, um, the plank positioning, uh, also for opening and activating that front side of the body. So here, I'm going to exhale, push away from the floor with my shoulders. I'm just going to not going to focus on that floor again. Um, let's kill me. I'm going to have you just push away, make sure the back of the neck is long. And then from here, I'm going to find my neutral. So belly is supporting I'm in my, hopefully in my neutral spine here. And then I'm going to press one leg out and leave it on the floor. So I'm pushing my toes under, I'm pushing strongly into this foot. So the back of my leg feels like it's on stretch, my calf feels like it's on stretch, and my quad feels like it's pushing up into the back of my leg a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it back in. And do the same thing on the other side, just getting that feeling. So quad um, is on, calf is stretching, right? And then I'm coming back in. So progressing that, right? Going out, tightening, right? And then I can float that leg up. So here I have my students hold and make sure that their hip bones are both pointed straight down. There's none of this funky rotation, none of that arching back. Arching back can be indicative of a tight stub as well. You want to pick up that belly, square the pelvis down, and then I can pulse here, just holding that. Trying to keep weight even on both arms, pushing that floor away, and then bring it back in. And then we'll do the other side. So sliding that leg out, 
but really opening, lifting the belly, making sure you're not sinking in your low back. Float the leg up. Both APS point straight at the ground, keeping the pelvis square, and then pulsing up. Keeping that neck long, and then bring it back in. Right, progression again would be opposite arm going to. So sliding out, taking that arm up, float the leg square off the pelvis, hold the side in neutral, not arching, right? And then we can either pulse here or we can go down and back up to it. Right, keeping that control, keeping that length, keeping the belly lifted. And up, down, and up, down, and up, and down, and up, and coming back in. And then the other side, so sliding out, finding that connection through the body, floating the leg, belly up, stretching the front side of the body, and then you can go pulses or you can go down and up. So keep checking in with that ASIS that they stay square to the floor. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down, and up. Nice. Progression lines on that. I would not, I wouldn't go to a progression where I'm curling in because I don't want to activate that hip flexor. So instead, my progression can become a bent leg pressing up. And then we try that on the other side. So I can press out, squaring off, bent leg, and pressing up, trying to keep those hips square. Watching for the arching back on this one, right? So keep trying to keep that back neutral and long. Right? And you could do that with a single arm balance to make it harder as well. Right? And then we could go into full planks. So full planks are great, or half planks even, because they really open the front side of the body. So if we went to just a half plank, just explore that first, and really press it out of the neck and shoulders, holding that belly tight, loose squeezing a little bit more. So if I'm trying to get the other hip flexors, I might encourage a little more loose squeeze than otherwise. Finding that press there, Good. holding there, nice long neck. Good. And I can hold. I just reach my feet down and come up, finding that full plank. So finding this whole body length, strong, strong legs. I always encourage. People to think about them, their planes as though they would want to stand in their planes. If you're standing on the ground, the legs are going to be really strong. They're not going to be floppy. This leg wants energy out to hold you up. Right? So energy out the arms, each other, energy out the leg, cause pulling up and holding down. Right. And then just to get a little stretch to the back, we've been working so hard, we're going to have you press upward, feeling a little bit up towards the sky. So upper body, just making sure the shoulders are in their pockets, not rolling out. In place, chest is opening, heels are dropping, and then we're just shifting from side to side, opening up the back body because we worked it pretty hard. That's it. And then coming back into your plank again. And then this is where I introduce planks or push ups, um, whether it's on your knees or on your feet, but then coming down and up into those push ups, right? Keeping that body long, right? The front side of the body long. I think you should do about 10, either bent or straight. Right. And then we're going to take a moment to rest there. And then we get to go to the side again. We're going to run out of the side to show you. Um, so I'll just briefly go through a couple side plank motions. Wait, Zayna, it's really crackly again. Try again. Okay. You're going to go through some side plank variations and motions that you could take them through since we're running low on time just to try to give you some ideas. But here, side plank, full side plank is a good one, right? If I keep my body square, it's really nice, again, to work through that back leg. And also, one of my favorites is taking this leg back, opening up. Right? This is just a lovely place to be. Lifting the hips, we're really working on lifting that inside, that bottom glute, and opening up to the sky. Great, and then working that down. I'm going to stay on the side a little longer to show you a few variations. So coming up, I'm going to push that hip, bottom hip forward. So I could do the work here with the emphasis on bottom glute pulling forward here. Yeah, I could do any of this work reaching back. Oops, nothing into the roller. There. Yes, as well. Um, so let's go to the other side. So 
So we're going to find full plank first. Like just see what that feels like. Holding there, lifting up, and potentially opening up this side. Really lifting this glute up to the sky. And then coming back down. And then from that kneeling position, right, you can do the similar. And I'm really working to push this butt and hip forward, right? Leg can come up, keep working for that press forward of that butt and hip. You could do kickbacks here or just kind of a big stretch to the side if you wanted. Yeah. And then relax down. So one of my very favorite stretches, which is what I was hoping to get to, is to use a foam roller to open the hip flexors. So there's a lot of hip flexor stretches out there, but there's a lot of bad ones, I think. Um, a lot of ones that are really hard to attain. So if I was gonna go into a lunge, for example, I need to stretch that psoas. I actually need to keep my spine vertical. If I go this way and stretch my psoas, I'm actually taking the stretch off of my hip. Right, so anytime I want to go to a hip flexor stretch, I have to think about keeping this open, not closed. So even on the reformer, right, I see a lot of times people are stretching their hip flexor in kind of that ease lunge position and their chest is down. That's not really stretching the hip flexor. Right? You have to get the trunk upright. Then I'm stretching across the hip. Right? Does that make sense? So lunge is hard because then what wants to happen is I want to rotate. So if I can keep closed and get my trunk, oops, get my trunk up, squeeze my butt down, now I'm stretching my hip flexor. But most of my clients will never get here for me. So, and it also can destabilize the pelvis if I'm not careful, if they have any issues back there. So I, my favorite way to get the hip flexors open is up with the roller. And most of you know this, you know me. But coming in and bringing the roller underneath the hips, you could use a block too, a roller, half roller, um, any of that will work. Even I tell people at home to use a ball sometimes or a pillow back there, just something to elevate the pelvis. And then I can take my leg up to my chest and my other leg straight out. So rib cage knits down towards the floor, pulling in really tight, and then stretching that other leg out off of that. So I'm really trying to scoop the belly towards the floor in order to get that leg on stretch here. And most people get a pretty good stretch out of this, and then they can work to straighten that knee as much as possible. So I'd rather have, if somebody's really tight, I'd rather have them float the long leg than, and keep the belly in the right place than arch the back to get the legs to the floor. The goal is not legs to the floor, the goal is hip open, right? And so the roller back here, I feel like it helps stabilize the pelvis. Can I ask you just a quick question? Because I don't yeah. know the answer to this. Is the the difference between drawing your knee in towards your chest like you're doing with your light, left leg right now versus left foot on the floor, is there any advantage to pelvic stability in those two positions? Versus, so being more... Uh, like your left foot would be flat on the mat, for example. You'd be in the uh -oh. same stretch, but you that... Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing here is that my back is actually arching now. So remember, if you remember anatomy of psoas, right? If it's, uh, if it's tight, it's gonna pull my back into extension anyway. Okay. So coming into here and rounding down this way, I can actually put it more on stretch on both sides. Like I'm keeping my back in that rounded scoop place. So mm -hmm. that's gonna give me bigger stretch here. Now, if you have an 80-year-old who's super tight in their hip and doesn't have any back extension issues, maybe this is the only way you'll, their hip is so tight, it might not even touch the floor. Like, they might be like this here right. all day, and that might be enough for them. Yeah. So it could be a starting point for somebody, but I think to get full benefit of stretch, this knee has, the more the knee comes up, the knee's up to help you round your back. So okay. does that help? Yeah, thank you. Yes, of course. What about both legs bent and pushing your bridging off? So the question is both legs bent and then bridging off. You're taking a tuck in and bridging. Yeah, so this is just like our bridging initially. So yeah, Anna's asking, what if we keep the roller underneath and we go from here with both feet down into bridging? 
what does that do for us? And it, it's a it's a, a lift up from our bridge, right? So somebody who's having a hard time bridging enough to stretch those hip flexors, this might be a great way to get them to um, open the hips and stretch along through the front of the leg, right? Just loose them to get to this place. And maybe, you know, some people don't have strong enough glutes to get here, to get up in that bridge. You have to have pretty darn strong glutes to push that so up open, right? So if your psoas is so overpowering, maybe your glutes are weak. And maybe that's part of the picture. So pushing up into the, then this way could be really helpful. Yeah. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, so then, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You can spend time stretching here. We, we love to do all our stretches, hamstrings. We can, you can do, you know, ab work up here. We, we love this position. This, this will help people get in their abs and stay in their abs versus um, being in the hips as well. So this is another place you could work somebody, yeah, to get them going. Yeah, so that, that's what I have for you guys. Hopefully I didn't talk your ears off too much. Hopefully you got some good information um, from it. So I got to shed one of my pet peeves. Thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> if you have questions or want me to answer, I'm, I'm happy to. If you want to send an email or through Facebook, um, you can send me a message and I'm more than happy to answer questions about that. Um, and then if you would, I would love to hear from you guys about um, what you want to teach. You know, we're probably we're going to try and stick to the same time, same day, and keep it rolling. So it'd be great to see what you guys want to teach. Or if you have topics, that you want maybe share those topics and maybe somebody who feels like they can share what they do with that topic could also do the offering. Great. Great. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.